And we're back, guys. Tennis in a minute. I'm your host, Good Energy. I give you the rundown on tennis coverage every day, but we're in the studio tonight, guys. Tennis after dark. Quick rundown of the day. We have a story. If you click on the video due to the headline, we're going to get into that. This is going to be a deep dive. Get some popcorn. Buckle your seatbelts. It's going to be a ride tonight. We're going we're gonna to be here for a while, guys. We have a lot to talk about. Now, Igas Fiontech, guys. The world's number one, the number one seed here. That's a Jordan fist pump. She dropped the first set to Beatrice Haddad, 6-4. She'd have to battle back, delivering a bagel in the second set and winning the third set, 6-2. Now, Iga was up 4-1 in the first set, had the opportunity to go up 5-1. And then she got a little bit complacent. She took, she she put the, the vehicle on cruise control. She thought she had it. But she had to go back to the game plan for the second and third sets, just stretching the court wide down the line with her back end, using her footwork. She had a few uh, double faults in this match, but overall, anytime I see her over 70% in terms of getting her first serves in play, then that's good. I can live with that. Uh, she did give up a ton of break points to Beatrice. Seven overall, Beatrice was three for seven, but Beatrice bounced back. Uh, after being down 4-1 to win that first set, she showed really, really good mental toughness. And Beatrice has a cheering section that follows her. She's very popular. Uh, but 18 breakpoint opportunities given to Iga. Iga converted on 11 of them. And Iga advances, guys, in three sets. A tough match. She's going to take on Maddie Patty, Madison Keys, who's playing well. Now, listen, guys. Elena Rabakina is someone that's just been playing amazing lately. There's not many players in this tournament that I feel can beat Rebecca right now. I think Madison Keys can beat her. I do. I really think Madison Keys can beat Elena Rebecca right now. She's playing that well, but Madison had to do it in three as well. Madison dropped the first set six love a bagel. Now, I told you the first set would go under in this match. It went under big time, but I also said that Iga first set should go under. Iga had the chance to go up 5-1, and then things got a little weird. It's just, I, I, I don't know. And then, you know, Beatrice came back. She ended up winning the first set. But Madison Keys, guys, she looks good. Her kick serve looks good. She's striking the ball well with her forehand. She would win the second set 7-5 and the third set 6-1, dishing out a breadstick, a breadstick excuse me, to Anz Jabor. Three aces, three double faults for Maddie Patty. She got 65% of her first serves in place. She won 62% of the first serves. She lost 41% of her second serve, but... The breakpoint opportunities were even, believe it or not, because Madison had a bagel in the first set. Literally, what she did over the course of the second and third sets equated to what Anz did in the first set. So three for seven on breakpoints overall for Anz and Madison Keys. But it came, Anz played a good match. Three aces, zero double faults. The second and third sets, they were a lot closer than what they seen. But I'm happy to see that Anz overall, she played a good tournament. And she looks solid. Now, Madison Keys is going to take on Iga Swiatek. That's going to be a really good matchup, guys. Now, again, I talked about how well Madison Keys is striking the ball. That, it's got to be scary for opponents. Because Madison Keys is one of, even at her age, I mean, she hasn't hit 30 yet, right? She's knocking on the door of 30. But even at her age, Madison Keys is one of the strongest players on tour. She's very powerful, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, she'll be 30, by the way, next year. So she's got a little bit more time to enjoy her 20s. But the head-to-head -head is 2-1. Igas Fiontech does own it. But the last time they played was in Cincinnati, guys. Remember that? I told you Madison Keys would win that match. Madison Keys was like a 16-1 to underdog in that match. Huge underdog in that match. And I told you Madison would win that. Um, they've played on clay once in Rome a couple years ago and Igas Fiontag, she won that in straight sets. Stay tuned. I will give a prediction for that match, but I do think Madison Keys is going to play very well in that match. And I think Igas Fiontag is going to struggle in that match. Madison Keys, she's striking the ball too strong and that's what disrupts Iga and her patterns, her quick strike tennis, her amazing footwork is power. And Madison Keys, of all the ladies left in this tournament, uh, I think she's got the strongest forehand. Now, Carolyn Garcia, guys, she is a bit upset at the new format here in Madrid. And in case you're not aware, Madrid historically has been a tournament that's, you know, if we go back at least the last couple years, you know, with rain and weather, it's it's the tournament's been spanning about 
10 days, right? But if we go back three to four years or, or longer, historically, it's been a seven day tournament. It's been a weekly tournament, 64 players um, with no buys. This new format has Carolyn Garcia upset. And we're going to talk about that tonight. So the new format, it essentially adds an extra round so the top seeds can get a buy. So essentially, it's following the format of what technically a slam would be as if there were 128 players because they're making room for a first round buy for the top players, which Carolyn Garcia doesn't really like. Now, Elena Rabakin has been on record and a lot of the top players, especially the top 10 players, they have not been getting along with the WTA and how, you know, just the supervisors, the organizers and the way things are being managed. They feel that they're being overworked, underpaid and just underappreciated. Right. So players like Elena Rabakina has been requesting more time off, longer breaks. And we got that this year. So Madrid now is essentially, it's going to be a two-week tournament. You know, technically 13 days, but it's going to span over the course of two weeks. Giving the top seeds buys in the first round. And Carolyn Garcia doesn't like that. She feels that it's causing too many breaks in play. And she feels that she doesn't want to, and I mean, she's, of Spanish descent, right? Uh, raised in France, but you know, hence Garcia, but she doesn't want to be in Madrid for two weeks. And she feels that just sitting around in between matches, there's nothing to do. All right, let's dive into that. If you are healthy, 100% healthy, I can understand that. Sitting around a couple days between matches, it's going to be a pain. Now, I've had match schedules in the past where, you know, I'll be in a tournament and you'll play Monday and then you might not play again till Wednesday. After the match Monday and all day Tuesday, it's bored. You're trying to find things to do and it's horrible. You want to play. So I agree with Carolyn Garcia there. I totally agree. You do not want to be waiting around. It's it's like a kid in a candy store. The countdown to the match, it's, it's frustrating. You just want to play. And here's the other thing. If you're not disciplined, you can easily go out in one of these cities. You can have a, a big breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And you can literally put on weight fast. When you are in these beautiful places and and trust me these players are treated very well there's buffets and the breakfast lunch dinner there's food there's snacks all the time you're drinking water you're you can easily put on weight so this is why players like you know look this is my just my opinion from watching players you know i'm not going to say any names but there's players that i watch where depending on the city they're in they'll completely gain three to five pounds and that's it forget about that tournament because they're now overweight so i do feel carolyn garcia in that aspect where if you're sitting around a lot it's not good you can lose your rhythm but on the other hand if you're a disciplined player you're eating right you're doing the things you need to do you're practicing it's a great time to recover and you know work with your coach go over a game plan watch some film so it's a catch-22 to that. Players like Elena Rabakina want the extra time. I think players like um, Pigula, Coco, they may want it or may not want it. If they're playing doubles, yes, we know Coco is playing doubles with Taylor Townsend, which was amazing. But Pigula doesn't like it, right? Because that's why she plays doubles and mixed doubles during the slams, because she says she doesn't want to be practicing all the time. She wants to be on the court playing using, not necessarily using the matches as practice time, but you learn from playing matches, right? You gain experience, you get better. So it's a catch-22. Now, here's the thing. If you are injured, if you're hurt, then you want the extra time. And a lot of players have been banged up. A lot of players, look, speaking of banged up, Carolyn Garcia, this was Miami, okay? This was when Coco had control of this match. Garcia called for the physio and slowed down Coco's momentum. We're seeing that. And that reminded me 
uh, what was that? Oakland, Venus Williams debut against, uh, I forget the Spanish player's name. Yeah. Banana in the tailpipe. Ruined her momentum. Call for the physio. We've been seeing that a lot with players against Coco, where Coco's getting ready to f- serve out the match. Total domination in control of the match, and players are calling for the physio, and it doesn't it look they could be hurt. Not going to pull a Ostapenko, Isla Tomjanovic. We don't know what the player's feeling, but it just seems like these injury timeouts are coming at the wrong time. And then when the players get back on the court after literally, what, what can a physio do? Venus Williams said it best. If you're injured, you can't play. What can a physio do with a little backpack, right? So when we see these players call for the physio and then they come out back on the court and then they're just, they're running like a freaking chicken with their head cut off. Listen, listen did you guys see... And what was it? I want to say it was Rome. Isla Tom John. Speaking of Isla, Isla and Camilla Georgie, I covered that match. Go find it. It's on the channel where Camilla called for the physio. She was getting spanked by Isla, her ankle or something. She called for the physio. She said her ankle was hurting. She comes out, breaks Isla, and she's running all over the court. The announcer said, there's no way she's injured. She said, there's no way her ankle's injured. She's just running 80 miles an hour out there. It happens, right? Slows down the momentum. It's the oldest trick in the book. But nonetheless, if you're injured, like Caroline Garcia was here, Elena Rabakina, she's been banged up earlier this year, then you want the extra time to rest and recover. Now, I've had, again, these matches and these tournaments where they span several days, a week, where if you're injured... Oh, you want that extra day of rest. You want to just stay in bed later so your body can heal and rest and get nutrients. So look, it's a catch-22. Personally, overall, though, covering the matches on tour and you guys follow the channel. I mean, the last few years, I've literally been covering every match. The first one coming online with the stats, with the plays, with the news. And I can tell you that the schedule is grueling. The schedule has been grueling. And I've said this year many times that I do appreciate the the just the consideration with this year's schedule. It's it's been light. We have not seen top ten players be able to take breaks like this in between big tournaments. So I think they've got the message. The consensus on the tour is look, last year's schedule was brutal. We saw a lot of players get injured and they couldn't finish the season strong. If Elena were back and is healthy, he could and I said, I don't think Elena's healthy in the finals. She got smoked in the finals. You know, I don't think Ego wins that. And then again, the conditions in Can- Cancun were horrible. We were there. It was horrible. You know, we need better conditions as well. And we're going to talk about Saudi Arabia. You know, stay tuned for that video. We're going to go there. We're going to talk about Saudi Arabia because it, it's, it just seems like it's all about the money lately. You know, and no player has spoken up. None of the players have spoken up. So we're going to get there and we're going to go there later. But again, what do you guys think? Do you like the format of Madrid here where it spans over two weeks now where the players, they the top seeds get a buy? Me personally, I think you can space the schedule out accordingly without dragging out a tournament like this. If you're going to make this a true two-week tournament, Let 128 players in. Okay, there's a lot of players on tour that they need game checks. You know, they need to cover their expenses. This is a big opportunity. Let 128 players in. If you're going to make it two weeks, make it two weeks and make it fair for all the other players. Because what happens is Osaka said this. When you have a long tournament like this, you get someone coming from qualifiers like Sarah Balek, Robin... uh, uh, Robin Montgomery, and the next thing you know, they're upsetting the top seeds because they haven't played. They haven't had time to adjust to the courts, you know. And then you're here for two weeks, and you're not even letting the doubles players practice. You're you're letting you're shipping them out 20 minutes away to a different court, different clay, different conditions, making them practice there because you don't want them on the grounds. That is completely despicable. That's unacceptable. WTA. ATP, you guys have to do better. You cannot have your elite 
players, I don't care if they're doubles or triples, practicing at a different facility because you, you, you don't want to let them on the grounds. That's unacceptable, okay? Unacceptable. But nonetheless, guys, what do you think? I agree with Osaka. When you have these buys, you're rusty, and then the top seeds are upset. And Coco said it best. Some of these top, top players, this is their first or second match on clay this season. They're going to be rusty. Okay, if you're going to make it a two-week tournament, let all the players in. Okay, points are points. If you win the match, you get the points. If you don't win, you don't get the points. There's no reason you can't let 128 players in if you're going to have a two-week tournament. Players are struggling. You know, you have players down in, in uh, you know, outside the top 100. They're sharing hotel rooms. You know, come on, we have to do better on the tour. You know, the top 10 players, they're all rich. They're all multimillionaires. They're, they're, they're paid. They're set. But there's a lot of great players that can't break back inside the top 100 or break in there at all because they're not given given the fair opportunities. So if you're going to extend these tournaments, let everyone in. And if you're truly injured, like Venus Williams said, you're not going to play. You can't play. Right. So I think that's something that needs to be considered. But do I agree with it? I do like the fact that they're giving the players the extra time to rest and recover because we want to see these players at their best. If they're not at their best, look, any any woman can lose. You know, tennis is a type of sport where and this is why the the slams when it comes to the to the men. A lot of times the better man in terms of condition, skill will win those matches because they're so long. Right. When we're talking about the grand slams in terms of a female match, you get broken early. You drop that set, make a mistake in the second set, the match is over before you know it. So being healthy is very, very important, especially on the WTA. So I do appreciate the fact they're letting the ladies rest and recover because these these are females at the end of the day. Their bodies are not made for this. A lot of these players are on all types of uh, quarter zone shots. They're, they're on all types of you know, different types of medications to recover. And it really, really destroys their body. So I think the rest is needed. However, if you're going to make this a 128 format, you need to let 128 players in. That's my only issue with this tournament. Let all the players in. They need money. Look, it's a million dollar tournament, thousand points up for grabs. Let them in. So the other question is, okay, well, if you let 128 players in, now they're going to have to increase the purse. And now that becomes an issue with sponsors, et cetera, et cetera, you know, accommodations, hotels, reservations. It becomes a bigger issue, but I feel that there's enough revenue here to make that happen. Okay. So that's my thoughts on, on that subject matter. And we're going to take a look at the matches tomorrow. Stay tuned for the next video. I do want to take a look at Marin Dreva and Arena Sabalenka. I just feel, I feel that Sabalenka, I, I can tell she's going through a lot still. And I can tell that she's bothered on the court. Uh, she's not herself. It seems like she's here and there, if you know what I mean. It's just she's not fully 100% focus on the match because I can tell that she's she's mentally not there and I think personally she probably should take a break I think she needs a break and um, I, I, I don't think she's going to win Madrid so Coco's going to move into the number two spot I think Sabalenka should take a break I think for her mental health I think she should take a break um, and if she needs to go back and hire her mental coach I think she should do that uh, the reason she got rid of her mental coach is she felt that personally any issue she has mentally, she's responsible for dealing with that. She has to woman up, accept responsibility and find a way to get through it. No one else can do that for her, which I applaud her for learning that and the growth and maturity she showed as, as a woman. But I think she's going through something now and I just wish her the best. I think she should take a break from tennis. Um, but again, if she chooses to play, we're going to watch. She's an amazing talent and she makes a lot of people happy by playing. So congratulations to her for just being a tough woman. We appreciate that. But again, what do you guys think about the format here? Should, should it be one week or two weeks and past champions guys, a little bit of trivia. Who, who has won Madrid 
back to back. Name two ladies that have won this tournament back to back. I'll give you a hint. Both of their names start with an S. Name two ladies that have won Madrid back to back. There's only two ladies who have done it since this tournament came on tour. Both of their names start with an S. Okay? And name another player. Name the only player to have won this tournament three times. Two trivia questions. Name the only player to have won this tournament in Madrid three times. And name two players that have won this tournament back to back. Both of their names start with an S. Tennis in a minute. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Again, comment below. Do you like the format here? Carolyn Garcia does not like it. She thinks there's a lot of downtime. She's hanging around. She doesn't want to be in this city for that long. She feels that it's it's a great way to lose your form. There's a lot Carolyn's complaining about. But again, you have players like we're back and that, that want the break. They want the rest. Tennis in a minute. Like the video. Show some love. We'll be right back. 